print ready to roll? Oh, just a minute, young man. Aren't we forgetting something? Tickets. Well, you gotta have a ticket, Danny, to see a movie. And have I got just the one? Last Action Hero, 1993, failed at the cinema. And like most movies that fail, it should have been forgotten and remembered as an asterisk on the careers of those involved. However, thanks to the advent of home video, and like a good few of those failed movies, it found a new appreciation. And I for one am pleased. This movie within the movie is a satire of the action genre, containing several parodies of action movies, such as Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. Incidentally, director John McTiernan had directed Die Hard, while Lethal Weapon writer Sean Black wrote the movie. And associated cliches, such as breaking the laws of physics during action scenes. Or characters overriding physical harm. So that the movie could progress. It's a fun watch. I found the two leads charming. I think she should be working with us. Undercover, of course. Look, the point is, there are no unattractive women here. Anthony Quinn's dim villain is an absolute hoot. First you, my friend. Now you turn it. 360 on me. 180, you stupid spaghetti slurping cretin. 180. And the villains, Mr. Bennett, played by Charles Dance. If God was a villain, he'd be me. And the Reaper, Slater's antagonist in Jack Slater 3, played by Tom Noonan. Man, I'm getting bored. Why don't we just skip to the end? <laughs> Both shine. The cinematography is first rate. The movie set pieces are well executed. Oh shit! And the realism beyond the movie is quite harrowing. The movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger as Jack Slater, a Los Angeles police detective and a douchey movie star self towards the end of the movie. And Austin O'Brien as Danny Madigan, who, due to the MacGuffin of a golden ticket. Please retain your stub, sir. Finds himself inside Jack Slater 4 his favourite movie franchise within a few minutes of the movie. How did you get here? I'm not quite sure where here is, sir, but I don't think you want to know. You can close your eyes, stay flat, and don't move. And eventually becomes Slater's partner and involves himself in Slater's current case, investigating criminal activities related to Mafia boss Tony Villardi, who was involved in the death of Slater's second cousin. I'll take you to the house where your cousin Frank was tortured. Who Danny had watched die while munching on popcorn while dissecting the script during the beginning of Slater 4. He's okay. Minor wound. Both cops dead. Throughout their investigation, Danny tries to persuade a skeptical Slater that they are in a movie. No, it is impossible. What's not possible? He's fantastic. This is his best performance ever. But that was you. You were in that movie. Until Slater sees the evidence for Danny's claim himself. See? That's my world. He's going over to my world. The three must still be open. Come on. After the result of Slater roughing up Mr. Benedict. This is for my daughter's black eye. 
However, before that scene, Slater saves the day as an action hero should. Firstly, he saves his retcon daughter, Whitney, and Danny. Hi. From the curious Mr. Benedict. He had one of the bullseye when he was with his second cousin. It's and his bunch of killers. Where the ticket stub comes into possession of said Mr. Benedict, who soon discovers the ability to transport him out of the movie and into the real world. Now, you know, and then the attack on the funeral is thwarted. Help me! Get me out of here! My God! This man's not dead! But not before completing a nice setup joke. I gotta call DC. Good for you. Watch it, Jack. He killed Mozart. I'll be rich, Jack. You'll be dead, but freeze. And on hearing of the failed plan, Mr. Benedict kills Feladi before being tossed into the real world by Slater. Slater becomes despondent upon learning the truth. I'm not worried that you're crazy anymore. I'm worried that you're right. But if I go, how do I get back? However, he's a hero and elects to follow Danny beyond the silver screen. And this is the harsh world where his mortality is on the line. Meanwhile, Mr. Benedict takes a shine to the real world. Help me test the theory. Sure, what can I do for you? Well... And sees its potential for villainy. I said I have murdered a man and I want to confess. Hey, shut up down there! However, being a villain of Jack Slater, he is compelled to kill him. And, being in the real world, he targets the actor who portrays Jack Slater, Arnold Schwarzenegger. To help him achieve this aim, he brings forth the Reaper, the villain from Jack Slater 3. Danny and Slater learn of his plan and race to the premiere of Jack Slater 4, where Slater saves Schwarzenegger and kills the Reaper, echoing his son's death in Jack Slater 3. <laughs> Just as Mr. Benedict appears and shoots Slater, critically injuring him. Danny saves Slater by disarming Mr. Benedict. Allowing Slater to shoot him in his explosive glass eye. No sequel for you. However, the blast causes the stub to be lost, which eventually lands outside a cinema showing one of my favourite movies, The Seventh Seal. I must admit, watching Dev suddenly be aware of the real world was pretty cool, while his scythe popped out of the screen. With Slater mortally wounded, Danny knows that the only way to save him is return him back to his fictional world. Take him home. And so they end up back at the private screening of Jack Slater 4. Death appears after a spot of ambulance chasing. And Danny, thinking that he was there for Slater, tries to stop him. However, Death is only curious why Slater isn't on his list. And after a plea from Danny to save Slater. Wait a minute! Help us! 
You gotta get him back. You can do it. I know you can. Death gives him some advice. If I were you, I might be looking for the other half of the ticket. Which he does. And they both re-enter the movie where Slater's injury becomes a Hollywood trope. What is this, some kind of a joke? I wouldn't even call us a flesh wound. Come on, here, let's get him out of there. After experiencing their own respective worlds, Slater and Danny learn to live in them for their own betterment. For me, this well-crafted, smartly written movie ranks alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger's best action movies like Predator, Terminator 1 and 2 and True Lies. On its release, it wasn't as successful as those. However, after years, it has morphed into a cult movie and I think it deserves its status. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit the like button and notification bell for new content. Those movies where they say, make my day, or I'm your worst nightmare. Well, listen to this one. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Ha! You didn't know I'm gonna say that, did you?